Throughout history, greed, lust for power, violence, and hubris have engulfed the lives of kings, dictators, pirates, and conquistadores. The underworld of organized Mexican drug crime knows no shortage of these traits in the men who drive its activities. Without getting into genetics, testosterone, or psychological predispositions, as the late Robin Williams said, if women ran the world, we wouldn't have wars, just intense negotiations every 28 days. But all jokes aside, Mexican cartels are equally and predictably overwhelmingly dominated by men. That's not to say though that a handful of women haven't made a name for themselves, equally drawn by prospects of immeasurable wealth and power, albeit with great costs to their freedom and all too often, their lives. Without further ado ladies and gentlemen, we give you our exclusive sample of 5 female narcos, ranked from least to most influential. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that notification bell for weekly content. Number 5. Jocelyn Alejandro Nino La Flaca Jocelyn Alejandro Nino aka La Flaca was a Sicaria and member of Las Flacas, an independent hit squad of female soldiers working as private assassins for various criminal organizations in northern Mexico. La Flaca, translated as the skinny one, was not too dissimilar from the other members of the hit squad. After all, they were meant to look alike, same height, weight, and complexion, and they all sported bulletproof vests, gold chains, sunglasses, and tied up hair. Most were recruited from the age of 18, picked out as prostitutes or crime lookouts before moving up the ranks. Their childlike appearance helped them fool their clients' enemies and could easily lull them into a false sense of security. When they were unarmed, and unarmored of course, they stopped at nothing to butcher, decapitate, mutilate, torture, and kill as long as the price was right. Nino mainly worked for the Gulf Cartel in the zone of Tamaulipas, where she was associated with a sub-branch of the cartel called Los Ciclones. She was employed to carry out raids on members of the rival Los Metros sub-branch in Rio Bravo, a turf which was actually under the control of Los Metros and which Los Ciclones were trying to gain for themselves. As she made a name for herself as a guiltful assassin and skilled sharpshooter, she earned the nickname La Flaca, not only in reference to her hit squad, but also to approximate her to the figure of death. By association with Santa Muerte, the venerated Mexican folk saint also dubbed the skinny one. The photo you see now paved the way to her chilling downfall. It was uploaded by members of the rival Los Metros gang, mainly so that she could be identified and captured by the Mexican forces. However, it was ultimately Los Metros who got to her first. In April 2015, Nino's body was found on the abandoned bridge between Matamoras, Mexico and Brownsville, Texas. Her dismembered corpse was found stuffed inside a cool box. Her other remains were in a plastic bag. In the same place, the quartered corpse of another woman was found, as well as the decapitated body of a man all three victims were associated with the Ciclones, to whom a threatening note was found, handwritten by a Metro Sicario. The Metros claimed responsibility for the murders and posted the pictures of the obscenity online. Nino's mutilated arm could be seen bearing a tattoo of one of her surnames. Another picture showed her beaten on the ground with the other victims. Forensic experts corroborated the evidence by concluding she was tortured, executed by a bullet to the head, then dismembered and frozen. She was somewhere between 18 and 22 years of age when she died. Number 4. Maria Guadalupe Lopez Esquivel, alias La Catrina. Lopez, aka La Catrina, was a murderous high ranking Sicaria in the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG. The daughter of a rancher and a housewife was brought up in Tepalcatepec, Michoacan where she spent much of her adolescence skipping school and partying. In 2017, she is believed to have joined the Jalisco cartel after falling in love with the high-ranking drug baron named Miguel LM2 Fernandez. Lopez rapidly rose up the ranks, leading a glamorous lifestyle which she was not shy to showcase on social media. She epitomized narco-ostentatiousness, flaunting rolls of cash, automatic weapons, and her feminine charms. In fact, 
she was part of a small network of female Sicarios in the Jalisco Cartel who were favored for their youth and beauty to lure and trick foes. At the height of her power, she had a team of hitmen, one of the most feared in the Jalisco Cartel, and coordinated assassinations, extortions, and kidnapping. Her most notorious venture was an armed ambush on the state police in October 2017, which cost the lives of at least 13 personnel. Her sanguinary reputation earned her the nickname La Catrina, after the folklorish figure of death in Mexican culture. But the raid would pave the way to her downfall. The Mexican government did not take lightly to such barefaced audacity. On January 10th, 2020, after a tip-off of Lopez's location, the National Guard surrounded the safe house she and her hit squad were staying in, in La Bocanada, Tepaltecapec. Lopez and her Sicarios opened fire from inside. After a fierce shootout, Lopez took a bullet to the jugular. When the soldiers poured into the compound, they found a frightened, bloody Lopez curled up to the wall, gurgling blood as she struggled for breath. Check it out. She was whisked off in a helicopter, but according to reports, died within minutes of takeoff. She was 21 years old. Her lover and commander, Miguel LM2 Fernandez, was promptly arrested. Number 3. Melissa Margarita Calderon Ojeda, alias China Suarez. Born in 1984, Calderon was a savagely violent commander operating under the Sinaloa cartel. Calderon first made a name for herself by joining the Damaso sub-branch cartel in 2005, and through ruthlessness, cunning, and tactical use of her femininity, moved up to become commander of the armed unit in 2008. Wielding control over La Paz and Cabo San Lucas in Baja California Sur, she swiftly gained a reputation for violence deemed directly responsible for a peak of murders in her areas of operations, costing at least 178 lives. To streamline the cartel's drug trade, she bought off cops, kidnapped enemies, and left their dismembered corpses at the doors of their families. Her command inspired unwavering loyalty from her Sicarios, whom she frequently rewarded with bags of cocaine. Calderon's career took a dramatic turn when in 2014, she was stripped of her commanding status by big boss of the Damaso cartel, El Grande, the same leader who had ordered the death of her first boyfriend. She was replaced by the battle-hardened and notorious Abel Quintero, who had just been released from jail. Livid, she took the bulk of her former soldiers, rallying 300 people to her side and waged war against her old bosses and associates. She also formed a new cartel, the Plaza of Baja California Sur, terrorizing La Paz and Cabo San Lucas as she vied for control over its routes and had Sicarios roam the streets with their signature red bikes. The regional rise in violence made her a priority target for local authorities. She frequently changed location to keep them off her tail. One time, she needed to change her vehicle and had one of her Sicarios reach out to a contact who dealt cars. When the car was delivered, Calderon killed the vendors to get the car for free, and when her enraged Sicario threatened to go to the police, she cut off his forearms, shot him in the head, and buried him in a mass pit along with other victims. She had turned so psychopathic that her then-boyfriend, Hector Pedro Camareno Gomez, aka El Chino, left her, fleeing the cartel, and when captured by the police, tipped off Calderon's whereabouts and the location of her mass graves in exchange for a reduced sentence. In his testimony, he claimed that the young girl he had once fallen in love with had turned into a mass murdering monster. In 2015, she was captured without a single shot fired at the aerodome of Cabo San Lucas, trying to flee the state by private plane. She was sentenced to prison for the deaths of over 150 people. Number 2. Sandra Avila Beltran, the Queen of the Pacific. Sandra Avila Beltran, dubbed the Queen of the Pacific, is a former drug trafficker known for her connection with the Sinaloa Cartel and the Colombian Valle de Norte Cartel. Sandra was born into the opulent world of organized crime. Her father, Alfonso Avila Quintero, was related to one of the founders of the infamous Guadalajara Cartel, overseen by her uncle, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. The family relation is disputed, 
As a result, she grew up around drug lords, witnessing negotiations, transactions, and generally gaining a criminal business sense from a young age. She spent much of her childhood counting cash and at 13, witnessed her first shootout. Despite this, she studied to become a journalist, purportedly arriving late for every university class. Classmates remember her as quiet, untrusting, and with few friends, but whose dress sense and even the cars she was dropped off in all pointed to a luxurious lifestyle. After university, she ditched her journalistic designs and became involved with the Sinaloa cartel, organizing cocaine and heroin shipments. Her beauty and business acumen allowed her to move up the ranks, beguiling powerful men every step of the way. By the age of 21, she dated Amado Carrillo Fuentes, boss of the Juarez cartel, nicknamed Lord of the Skies for his infamous fleet of drug trafficking planes. She married twice, both times to police commanders turned traffickers, who had also both worked as anti-drug policemen and who were both executed by stab wounds to the back. She was also close to El Chapo, and at one point was considered head of public relations for Sinaloa kingpin Ismael El Mayo Zambada, whom it is claimed was also her lover. Her drug trafficking rise was mainly attributed to her affair with Juan Diego Espinoza Ramirez, aka the Tiger, the Colombian cocaine smuggler for the Valle del Norte cartel, whose family and business associates were allegedly so charmed by Sandra that she became a crucial link between Sinaloa and the Colombian suppliers. While her associates, friends, and foes were being assassinated or captured, she managed to stay afloat. The police attribute her success to her looks, flirting her way to the top, but also her acute business sense, particularly being the quick learner she was. Her grace and decorum are those of a beauty queen. She fittingly received her royal title, Queen of the Pacific, by the media in 2001, after she was linked to a tuna fishing boat transporting nine tons of cocaine seized by government forces at the Pacific port of Manzanillo. She spent the following years in hideout, constantly on the run with Espinoza, narrowly escaping death and suffering the kidnapping of her own son. Fate caught up with her in 2007, when she and Espinoza were arrested and sentenced to jail. But she still lived like a queen. Just take a look at her attitude when she was captured by Mexican authorities. Su nombre, por favor. Sandra Avila Beltran. De donde es originaria? Tijuana, Baja California. ¿Cuál es su dirección? ¿Cómo? Santa Bárbara, 185. ¿Qué ciudad? León. ¿Qué estado? Guanajuato. ¿De dónde son originarios tus padres? De Culiacán, Sinaloa. ¿Qué edad tienes? 45 años. ¿A qué te dedicas? Al lugar y al comercio. ¿Qué comercias? Ropa, rento casas. ¿Por qué estás aquí? For an order of apprehension with fines of extradition. She sported high heels, wore improvised makeup and expensive jewelry, while being tended to by maids who gave her food, alcohol, and cigarettes. She complained about insects in her cell, asked for lawyers for extra time for makeup, and when prison guards denied her access to restaurant-made food, claimed they were violating her rights to entertain herself during her years of solitary confinement. She reenacted a career in journalism, making forecasts on world elections, keeping a diary, as well as a close ear out for world events via radio. Liberated in 2015, she finds no guilt in making a career out of selling drugs, citing the hypocrisy of world states' simultaneous participation and criminalization, as well as the legality of alcohol and tobacco. She has also become a vocal critic of Latin American politics, with particular emphasis on corruption. Number 1. Enedina Arellano Felix, aka the Godmother, or simply the Boss, is currently the top boss of the Tijuana cartel, making her the highest ranking female drug lord in the history of Mexican crime, and one of the first female cartel bosses in human history. Enedina was born into a family of narcos. Her elder brothers worked for their uncle, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, top boss of the Guadalajara cartel, overseeing the Tijuana drug trade. After graduating with a bachelor's degree in accounting, 
she entered the family business, advising her brothers and assisting them in money laundering and financial administration throughout the 80s and 90s. After the dissolution of the Guadalajara cartel in 1989, Enadina famously charmed Armando Lopez, El Reo de Sinaloa, close associate of El Chapo Guzman, who eventually fell madly in love with her. But in the context of the war between the Sinaloa and Tijuana cartels, the Arellano Felix brothers assassinated Lopez and broke the truce between the two sides over the failure to accept Lopez's love for their younger sister. In 2000, the financial brains of the cartel, Jesus Labra Aviles, dubbed El Chui, was arrested, leaving an administrative vacuum which Enadina promptly filled, moving out of the shadows and over to the helm of the organization. With the promotion, she carved a role for herself as one of the cartel world's most stable and discreet figures who ultimately enabled the survival of her brother's cartel. Unlike many women in the Mexican drug world, she cares little for power or beauty and avoids violence as a solution to problems, in stark contrast with her unhinged brothers. Enadina has been described as methodical, intelligent, and extremely elusive always keeping her head down and discreetly devoting herself to family and work. A Catholic woman, a few words, she wakes up at the crack of dawn and purportedly never swears. The deaths and captures of her brothers in the late 90s and early 2000s spelt the decline of the cartel, but Enadina managed to keep it afloat. In 2008, she eventually assumed the cartel's leadership after the arrest of her brother, Eduardo Ariano Felix. Ever since, she has capitalized on her unique traits to forge alliances, secure drug routes, and set up bribe networks across the cartel centers of operations, helping to establish a more business-minded scope to the cartel's growth. Enadina led the cartel alongside her son, Luis Fernando Sanchez Ariano, until 2014, when Sanchez was arrested, and is now presumed to run a looser version of the Tijuana cartel, but with ever-growing foreign connections. And that's all for today. Let us know if you agree with our ranking. Don't forget to show your support by subscribing, liking the video, and commenting below. See you guys very soon with more fresh content for you.